Okay, I believe we're live. Good, uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, my name is Martin Boyd, VP Product Marketing at Prophecy, and I'm going to be the, the the host and kind of the main speaker, I think, for this uh, presentation that is co-presented um, between uh, Prophecy and uh, Microsoft. Um, from a technology perspective, we've got a lot of different things going on. This is being streamed on, on LinkedIn Live, but well, we're we're using our own webcasting software, which is linking to LinkedIn Live, so we have two distinct audiences. Um, you can feel free to drop questions in the uh, uh, the chat for LinkedIn, and we'll have someone fielding them there and passing them back to us, uh, um, depending on the question. Um, but also, in, uh, if you're in our Goldcast uh, uh, room, uh, you can feel free to drop questions in the Q&A there, and we'll also try and uh, take care of them. And it's uh, I'll say one more thing uh, before I introduce my, my co-presenters and let them speak for a moment. Uh, we have a very broad uh, audience here. Um, there's... Uh, a lot of people from healthcare, because this was billed as healthcare, so healthcare providers. Um, we have a lot of people who are medical device manufacturers, because that primarily is the audience for, for that Mike and uh, Carson uh, speak to. We have also a lot of Microsoft people and a number of our partners. So we have a lot of different audiences we're going to hit here. And uh, hopefully there'll be something in this for, for everybody. Um, and having said that, uh, Carson and Mike, do you want to say a little bit about what we're uh, attempting to do here and kind of uh, put this in context for your, your audience? Sure. Thank you so much, Martin, for uh, not only teeing this up, but, you know, kind of allowing us to collaborate and partner in this space. You know, as, as everyone watching knows, you know, we, we have a very regular uh, series uh, of, of webinars and value added uh, briefings. Uh, that we tend to do. And uh, we're really happy to be partnering with Prophecy on this one. Um, I know I have a lot of uh, customer conversations uh, on a regular basis and data is always top of mind. There's a lot of it and unlocking it and really realizing the true value of that, both from an organizational optimization perspective, but also how we connect uh, to providers and to patients um, is really what we're trying to unlock. And there's um, obviously a lot of regulations and things that we have to take in mind. So master data management strategy is top of mind for all of our customers today. And uh, Prophecy is a partner that we, uh, we work with very closely in this space. Um, a lot of our customers uh, work directly with Prophecy. So we wanted to uh, spend some time today unpacking um, how they are working with customers in our healthcare space today. Uh, Mike, I know you're uh, even closer to this than I am. So we'd love to hear a few thoughts from you before we kick it back to the Prophecy team and get ourselves uh, going today. Yeah, thanks, Carson. So um, thanks for coming today. Uh, I think this is going to be a great topic for everybody out there. Um, you know, as you know, the, the data volumes and the insights that we're trying to unlock from it um, is just it's becoming paramount to being a successful business, regardless of industry, but in particular in healthcare, manufacturing, supply chain. Uh, you know, as you're getting data from all these different places, um, real-time data, IoT, streaming, SaaS services, some of them Microsoft, some of them other places, it, it's really important to get a handle on this foundationally. And, and while master data management is not a new topic, I think my opinion is, and what I'm seeing across my customers is that it's becoming um, even more important to understand where your data is coming from. And then also, if you're gonna do data analytics on it and do it successfully, you really need that foundation of clean, trustworthy data. And that's where products like Microsoft Purview uh, combined with, with the capabilities that Prophecy um, is really, um, is something you have to do before you start building reports and analytics. And, and we're not all good at doing that, but I think as we're looking at you know, this data coming in from SaaS services, um, things coming in from Azure, things coming in from your own on-prem environments, uh, Prophecy really does have a, a best of breed solution around master data management. I'm excited to hear even more about it. Um, as a testimony, I um, one of their uh, use cases is with uh, UC Health in Colorado. Um, I used to be a customer of mine that I'm super close with and really enjoyed working with. And um, I brought it, they were looking for a solution in this space for uh, building out a provider index, basically a master list of providers. And, and uh, brought them in, and that was a really successful story that Prophecy is able to talk about today. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Martin so um, you can hear more about it. But uh, thanks, Martin, and take it away. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Uh, interesting, though, on UC Health, uh, when I joined Prophecy about three years ago, they were the very first customer I went and visited with. 
to because they're local to me here and and uh, they had an interesting use case so i've kind of tracked with them uh, as they've uh, as they've continued and i'm going to talk about them in just a, a second here so let me share my screen um i know everybody is just desperate for powerpoint in their life so uh let's get started with that and should be sharing in a second oops that's not right there we go. That's the right one. Okay, so um, thanks, uh, uh, thanks, guys, for for setting the context there. As I said, this is uh, this presentation is jointly with Microsoft, so you're going to hear a lot about Microsoft technology and Microsoft products. If you happen to be someone who is not as centric around uh, Microsoft, uh, all of this does continue to work, but there's a lot of things we'll talk about here that are kind of um, you know, a little bit of special sauce and a little bit of, of uh, special stuff that we've done with Microsoft. But really, the, the intention here is to talk about um, innovation and health sciences, uh, you master data management, and uh, um, uh, Mike just mentioned there, you know, foundation of trusted, consistent data is kind of key for all of that. And that's, that's what we're going to be talking about. So irrespective of whether you're coming from the device side of medical device and manufacturing and sales and distribution, or whether you're on a healthcare provider, uh, there's going to be a lot for you, I think, in here. Let's, let's, that's my hope. <laughs> that's, that was my intention when I put this together. So we'll see how well that goes. Feel free to let us know uh, in uh, the, the chat, depending on which, uh, um, uh, how, however you joined us. All right. So uh, why master data management? Let's, let's just start there. Because master data management is a horizontal technology. It's not just designed for, for healthcare. Um, it's it's uh, for any of our organization that has data, meaning every organization. And the, the larger you are, the more data you have, the more you have need of this. So here's a quote from uh, Gartner from their Magic Quadrant on Master Data Management. MDM initiatives have continued to, to, to progress as a foundational component of digital transformation programs. And that's a value prop that we've been pitching and selling for years, ever since our inception. Um, and it's good to see that Gartner, you know, <laughs> was able to recognize the whole thing. So why is it transformational? Let me just spend a, a little bit talking about some examples drawn from uh, both uh, healthcare providers and from medical device manufacturers. So you can get an idea of the kinds of use cases where consolidating data is a really important part of, of what you would do. So, um, and you, you can see, you see, you see health coming up here in a second. We're going to start with MD Anderson Cancer Center. They are the, come on, there you go, largest uh, cancer research center in the U.S. Um, and they wanted to be able to enable data sharing for research and operational efficiency. They started with us four or maybe even five years ago. Um, and uh, I'll talk more about their their uh, progression and what they've done later on in this uh, uh, this presentation here. But at a high level, uh, they wanted to enable data sharing. Uh, in particular, when COVID hit, um, they wanted to be able to share diagnostic uh, uh, and result information uh, with other organizations like Johns Hopkins and folks like that, because you know the interactions of of uh, COVID and vaccines uh, with cancer patient and uh, cancer. Uh, uh, diagnoses and treatments and all that kind of thing was an interesting interaction that they wanted to look at. But even prior to COVID, they had been doing a lot to uh, um, enable internal data sharing, some of it for compliance, some of it for just driving operational efficiency. Um, again, we'll talk a bit more about all of that. Over time, they have built out uh, data mastering, a golden data master uh, for things like patient, location, supplies, meaning procurement supplies, uh, the, the things they buy from device manufacturers and, uh, and you know disposable items like gloves and all that kind of stuff. Um, they also are managing employees, uh, which of some of which are healthcare providers, of course, reference data, which is where they start doing crosswalking of diagnostic information and all that kind of stuff, as well as there are nonprofits. So they even use uh, us to manage donors and make sure they're not hitting donors too many times and things like that. So a broad range of things all of it is around data and achieving some of these higher level goals. Mike mentioned UC Health, uh, their care provider group here in Colorado. Um, and uh, they wanted to, need to build out a provider hub. Uh, and a provider hub is, is uh, for anybody who's not familiar with the idea, is uh, all your doctors and nurses, the care providers that are on your staff that are delivering care. Um, they're, for operational efficiency, you need to have a consolidated list of all of that so you can schedule people and you know all uh, communicate with them and all the, the, the kind of the internal op operational things. 
But recently, there's been some uh, requirements by the federal government that some of this information gets published in a standardized way, uh, CMS requirements and things like that. So um, not only operational efficiency, but compliance were the things that they were looking for here. And so uh, at this point, they've only built out the provider side, but I know they have plans for multiple other things, getting into population health and, and various things like that, uh, that they're kind of progressively building out. Uh, and for population health, you would need to have a good view of uh, your patients, your outcomes, uh, your geographies, and uh, um, all of that kind of good stuff. Uh, Vituity is a contact care a contract care provider, meaning they're a care provider that operates on a contract basis to staff um, emergency rooms and and things like that. Um, and what they I'll, I'll go through their use case in a bit more detail uh, in a bit later as well, but they want to do multi-domain data consolidation for operational efficiency and compliance again. Um, and they progressively work through mastering patient and provider and facility and contracts and various forms of reference data just to standardize things well. So um, all of these are in the, these are just examples, by the way, of uh, the kinds of use cases that are uh, commonly dealt with using MDM, certainly using Prophecy, um, in the healthcare provider space. Um, I'll talk more a bit more about them in a bit, but let's, because we have also a good number of uh, uh, medical device manufacturers here, mostly because um, Mike and uh, Carson speak to you guys a lot. Um, here's some uh, uh, examples from our customer base of that. So Osser, don't know if you're familiar with them. I think they're in, I think they're in Iceland. I'm not 100% sure, I think it's Reykjavik. Um, uh, and they do um, orthopedics equivalent manufacturing, like uh, uh, um, prosthetics and this and that kind of stuff. Uh, they had over 20 ERP instances, um, some of which were MS Dynamics. They're trying to um, uh, consolidate a lot of that information um, so that they can en enable enterprise visibility uh, in an operational sense, uh, reduce shipping costs, and make sure they have a proper contact for follow-up and that kind of thing with their customers. So they have over time mastered uh, customer and product data. Um, so these are, you know, this is speaking to their consumers, the customers that they, they sell to or deliver to. Um, Aspen Surgical, surgical products, to put disposable surgical products, um, um, gloves and scalpels and th that kind of thing, I believe. Um, they wanted to get visibility in their distribution channel. As a manufacturer slash distributor, um, they are selling through large procurement contracts to uh, care provider organizations. Um, they wanted to get a better handle on who exactly are their customers, meaning who's consuming what, um, um, also their products, so that they can figure, again, who's consuming what? Is there something that we can offer them? Are they buying, you know, five different types of gloves when if they only bought one type of glove, we could give them, give them the gloves at a better price or whatsoever? It basically enabled communication with their downstream consumers and also in a very tactical way, reduce billing errors. Because again, um, my understanding is they had uh, data in a lot of different systems, but the data was maybe not all that uh, uh, you know, high quality, et cetera, et cetera. So again, mastering customer and product information. Then Dent Splicerona, uh, um, dental solutions manufacturer. This is uh, um, a merger of two different organizations. Um, and as they brought their organizations together, again, they had customer and consumer information in various ERP systems. They needed to pull those together so that they could see who their customers were, who was buying what, and they could, uh, having consolidated all of that information, uh, use that to try and drive cross-sell and upsell into dental practices uh, around the US. So um, quite different sets of use cases, but all using master data management, specifically in this case, the, all these cases using Prophecy. Um, and uh, why, what, what's the common thread between all of them? The, the data that they have is in multiple systems for perfectly good logical uh, historical reasons, but that means that they're, when they're trying to leverage their data to drive the business, to drive efficiency, to get insights, that's a really hard problem unless you can uh, um, deal with the fact that the data is in lots of places. So um, hopefully that gives you a little bit of a feel for this. Um, what I'm going to do now is talk a little bit about, um, you know, kind of go down into a, a semi pseudo architectural cartoonish block diagram level of, uh, of, of what's really going on here. So all of these organizations in various different ways are looking to drive their business with data. I mean, which business isn't these days? Uh, and if you're certainly, if you're a Microsoft organization and you're thinking about Azure, or you're probably already on Azure, you're probably hearing Microsoft and every other vendor talking about this every day. 
if you're trying to drive your business, whether it's under the heading of digital trans transformation, business insights, operational efficiencies, or whatever, or compliance, or whatever it is in your particular case, you want high quality trusted data that is complete, consistent, and accurate and ready to use. And that seems like a no brainer kind of uh, uh, statement, doesn't it? Uh, of course, that's what you'd want, but that's not what most people have. Most people have is data that is resident in many siloed sources. In the case of Dental Supply and Serona, there was two organizations that came together. Their data was in multiple ERP systems. It hadn't been entered, hadn't been created uh, with the benefit of a unified data governance uh, solution. So, you know, names get entered differently, addresses get entered differently. Customer status is built on a completely different method, all of that kind of thing. So how are we going to look at this information and make sense of it and figure out um, you know, what kind of sales campaign we can, you know, offer to uh, uh, customer X. So with all that fragmentation, it's very hard. The, du the data ends up being duplicated, ends up being, of course, it was ungoverned because it was never created on a governed basis. And so now you've got inconsistent and incomplete information. Um, and, and what you really need is this high quality data. So the data itself becomes a, a, um, a brick wall, an obstacle, uh, to you achieving your business goals. The, you know, the data that you're trying to use is itself the problem. So what are we going to do about it? To break through that, um, and we, we have two different uh, types, very highly, co whoops, uh, high, highly correlated, very related products, but, uh, but different. And in the case of a Microsoft uh, um, uh, technology, uh, we have Microsoft Purview, which is there to govern data, to create a data catalog, scan and classify, all the different sources that you may have to find out what are all my sources of customer data? What are all my sources of product data? What are all my uh, locations or sites or employees or care providers or whatever it is, you're drawing that information from lots of different places and building a catalog of here's what we got. And that's a great place to start. The next thing that you would do is use that same technology to define data standards. To say, if I've got a uh, a patient, if I've got a medical device, if I've got a customer, here's the key and critical information that I must have about that that entity, that product, whatever it is. Um, so we start to lay down here the governance rules. I can't have a patient without having their age um, because that's always going to be critical to my, uh, you know, how I operate or, or whatever the information is you need, you specify it up here. But Purview by itself doesn't enforce any of those rules. This is just the rule book that you write. Um, but you know, you've, we've written the rule book, but we have no referee on the field who's making sure that that's how the game is being played. Uh, that's what Prophecy MDM is there for. It's there to enforce the standards that were set by the governance platform. So um, uh, Prophecy is able to uh, look at all the sources of, say, customer data or product or whatever it is that we're, we're, we're thinking about here, and we can match and merge that information across these multiple sources um, so that we can see that, you know, these two products really are the same one. This patient, although the data was entered differently, is really the same one. Um, we can match and merge that with um, you know, fairly uh, sophisticated uh, um, algorithms there to make that uh, work. And then we can validate and remediate that data. So validate that it's meeting the standards that we set up here. So the product has all of the correct attributes, the customer or the patient or whatever it is meets all of the standards that we specified up here in our governance platform. And where it doesn't, we can do some remediation. We can, uh, um, where the data is uh, inconsistent or incomplete or non-standard in whatever form, we do things to, to uh, make sure that it is now uh, valid. We can do lots of work uh, that is um, used by writing scripts or algorithms or whatever to uh, you know, standardize various different things. Uh, but sometimes a human being needs to get involved because information is just so messed up or, or so ambiguous uh, that a, the human judgment is required. And so we can handle all of that too. And these two things, the, the arrows showing here are uh, the integrations that we've built um, between uh, prophecy and purview, master data management and governance, uh, in order that whenever we create a new entity here in, uh, in, in MDM, it is pushed into purview. Um, uh, purview can then uh, enrich and uh, embellish on that and all of that, you know, these other uh, broader rules then get made available to prophecy. So we have this bi-directional integration so that here we're writing the rules and here we're enforcing the rules. And that's kind of a, a perfect little uh, complementary yin and yang kind of thing. Uh, these things work, what we say is they work better together. Each one has a value prop by itself, uh, but writing the rule book without enforcing it is of limited value. 
Uh, if you have the ability to enforce the rules, but no one's ever specified them properly, well, that's a little inefficient too. So these two things are better together. And that's kind of the core of how all of this uh, um, uh, pulls together. Let me take all of this at a little bit of a, a more detailed level. And again, I said we're going to be talking about Microsoft technology here, but this works in a more broad sense if you, and I know it would be sacrilege for this audience, but if you're not using Purview for governance and you happen to be using Calibra or Alation or, or, or spreadsheets or SharePoint or whatever, we can still work with you. I mean, some of these things are, are, are plug and play, but as I said, they're, they're really, uh, we've done more work integrating into the Microsoft environment than, than, than any other. So, uh, so here it is. So what would this look like if you try and um, screw it all together in an Azure environment so that you're, again, whatever your particular topic is, customer data, product data, whatsoever, and nearly always you're going to deal with multiple domains, not a single one, by the way, that's that's worth mentioning. Um, so uh, whatever you're, you're doing, you would start off if you have access to Purview, and uh, you should because it's not that expensive and uh, uh, it, it's going to help you. Uh, move things forward more quickly, you use Purview to scan and classify data from whatever your source systems are, uh, ERP systems, CRM systems, custom apps, cloud apps, legacy apps. If you're building, a, if you're UC Health and you're building out a provider hub, there's going to be lots of external uh, um, uh, systems that you, you're pulling credentialing information from, that kind of thing. I mean, th this is a very broad variety of stuff. Use Purview to build a data catalog of all the data sources that you have. Uh, that's part one. So you've got, you know, X sources of customer data, Y sources of product, location, whatever, again, whatever it is that is uh, your particular interest for the use case that is uh, that you're working on. In parallel, you've got Prophecy, uh, Master Data Management, which is there to, to build out a uh, an entity model of, again, whatever it is you're interested in, customer data, product data, location, reference data, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, one observation, I just mentioned multi-domain. Uh, one observation is that most of our custom, Prophecy's customers are multi-domain. 83% have more than one domain, 63% have implemented a second domain in their first year. And we think that's very important, or obviously our customers do, because they've gone and implemented it. But um, it's important because the more coverage you have of the more domains, uh, the more um, data that you have that's that's properly managed, curated, and certified, uh, the, the more value you can derive. So the more data you you bring under master data management uh, and the, the, the related domains, the more value you can derive, uh, the more value you'll get out of your Microsoft investment, your Azure investment, the more value you'll get out of your data in general. So um, once these uh, domains have been created in pro uh, um, Prophecy, we, as I said a moment ago, we, we take those master data assets and processes and we make that available in Purview. We, we add it to their data catalog so that they can, uh, uh, data governance stewards can uh, complete out data dictionary information, uh, glossary information, and all the, the kind of the rules and data quality requirement information that, that they would need to. And all of that information, the governance standards and policies is made available back in Prophecy. Um, at the end of the presentation, uh, I'll give you a link that you can go to if you want to see this in real uh, live software. Uh, we host a weekly uh, um, live demo webcast, and, and we, we generally show what this looks like in terms of uh, you know live software and what the interface looks like and that kind of thing. But that's kind of how these things uh, uh, pull together. The master data entities are published to Purview, and the governance requirements are published to Prophecy um, so that these things uh, are better together. Now, that's just how things get set up. Now... Uh, we start operating it. So we start pulling mass source master data from all of these different uh, systems. Uh, we put them through uh, a lot of master data management processes. We examine their, their quality uh, according to the standards given. Uh, we do golden record management, which is where we do match merge survivorship, again, according to the standards given. Relationship management is how these things relate together and how they maybe roll up in a parent-child method. Um, and where there's um, problems or inconsistencies with the data, uh, data stewards can work on that um, to apply human judgment. Most of the time, uh, all of the, the, it's been automated, but maybe there's a little bit of, um, you know, the match score is a little bit low and we want a human being to check it before we decide that these are the same organization, that kind of thing. Or there's critical information missing and someone has to figure it out. So again, a human being might do that. So master data is collected across sources, match merge validated, and data stewards, data stewards remediate as required. Okay. Um, 
it, it, and we're using, again, in the case of Microsoft, uh, we, we like Azure Data Factory. We have a native integration with Azure Data Factory. We've built connectors for Azure Data Factory to bring data and load it direct to Prophecy, and those connectors are shipped with uh, ADF. So if you're in the Microsoft world, there's a lot of convenience there, and ADF has over 100 connectors to all of these uh, source systems. So again, makes your life a bit easier. Can we use other systems like MuleSoft or, or whatever? Yes, absolutely. But it's a bit more uh, convenient in the Microsoft world if you uh, use ADF. ADF also, or whichever ETL system you're using, will be pulling not just master data, but transactional data from all of these um, uh, uh, systems. So not just the patients, but their treatments and their you know various things like that. And all of that gets published into, uh, I'm saying Synapse here. Again, this is a Microsoft presentation. Could be Databricks, could be Snowflake, could be any analytic database that you would uh, choose. But the important part is you're bringing together the certified master data from Prophecy along with the transaction, the raw transactional data from these different systems. And now you've got everything you need um, to be a foundation for all data and analytics and data strategies, whether you're thinking about um, just you know simple relational data, whether you're thinking about managing it uh, and, and publishing it, um, exploiting it might be the right word, with uh, a data fabric or a data mesh, um, or a data lake house or whatever those technologies are that you care about and favor, what you need is that for the master data to be well cu curated and certified is the uh, phrase that Microsoft is, is adopting around this um, so that you can start to do pretty much anything you'd want to do. Um, so now you can uh, analyze all this information in Power BI, machine learning, click Tableau, Whatever it is you want to apply to it doesn't have to be Microsoft, but again, we're, we're mentioning those names as examples. Uh, and it turns out with Power BI, that there's one thing that makes it a little bit more uh, convenient for you. Uh, we built a Power BI connector so that anyone logging into Power BI can see the master data assets and prophecy that they're supposed to see, applies the right levels of security and uh, you know simplifies the, uh, uh, the navigation of it. So you can directly pull that information from prophecy or you can pull all of that information from Synapse, where it's probably also been published. So this is kind of the big picture. And and um, so a lot of you here, this may seem a little complex. For sure, there's a number of different things going on. But if you're looking at it from the data cons consumption perspective, uh, you're just an analyst who's trying to figure out, I, I need some various information about patients and outcomes and geographies because I'm trying to publish a report or, or get some insights around population health. You shouldn't need to do all of this. If someone's already taken care of patients and standardizing the diagnostic codes and all of that stuff, you're just uh, consuming the data, uh, then you can, um, there it is, it's building now. <laughs> um, I'll just build this out because it's a little, a little clunky. So if you've got this certified trusted data that was produced by all this process I just described, you've got Purview creating the data catalog and, and having a, a flags to identify which data is you know, certified and trusted because it came from MDM. You've got the master data coming from uh, Prophecy, which is this, uh, you know, consolidated golden trusted master data. And then you've got Synapse, which is holding probably that plus the transactional data. You've got whatever analytics tools you're using, uh, but the data consumer can now discover certified data sources, which we, because they're certified, you know that they're properly governed and the data is consistent and complete. And as a data consumer, you're not worrying about, is this data good enough to use? I'm taking this raw data feed, but um, is it, can I trust it? I don't know. I'm seeing these things that look like they might be the same, but they're, but they're not listed as being the same. And, you know, you, you go into this spiral of not being able to trust your data and spending a lot of time trying to prep it by hand and all of those things don't really work and they certainly don't scale. Uh, but if you've got certified data, those things you can just take for granted. Grab the data off the shelf, bring it into your port, start producing uh, insights that you didn't have before. And uh, seamlessly, what I just said, seamlessly combine data sources, enterprise analytics for data-driven decision-making, whether it's simple reporting of, uh, you know, through Power BI or Click or Tableau or anything, any visualization tool, or you're doing uh, um, AI, ML, and trying to get, you know, more advanced analytics and thinking about how you might uh, drive your business better. If you have certified data uh, that's properly curated, all of that's tractable, a manageable process. And if you don't, um, you will be stuck in the mud for a long time, not really being able to uh, to move forward. So hopefully that makes sense, irrespective of what part of the, the audience you're in. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see how this 
getting the right foundation of data managed through this process will allow you to uh, get to your um, uh, objectives a little bit better. So let me kind of recap some of that stuff uh, through the lens of, of, of healthcare specifically, meaning um, uh, care organizations, care provider organizations. We already mentioned the, the first three in the list here, MD Anderson, UC Health and Vituity. Uh, we have uh, there's a lot of others that we have, and this isn't actually, I just realized I didn't, didn't add some of the more recent uh, logos on here. Uh, but nevertheless, we, we have a lot of uh, customers that we've uh, um, uh, in the healthcare world that are doing various different things. Uh, the themes around them, though, are um, when we engage with healthcare delivery organizations, we generally find there's a lot of technical debt, uh, meaning they've been They've been managing their business for, for a long time with relatively siloed systems and uh, um, not necessarily the most cutting edge IT systems. Do they invest in technology? Absolutely they do. If they have an extra million dollars sitting around, uh, what do they do with it though? They might go and buy an MRI machine. They may or may not be building up their technical backbone, their, their, their IT infrastructure. So we often find that those things are a little bit, um, there's a little bit of catching up to do, let's say. Um, and certainly there's generally no source of truth uh, there may, there's many, many different uh, um, isolated systems um, and uh, from previous acquisitions, uh, independent operations, all of that kind of stuff, and something needs to be done to pull them together. So in the case of, uh, as I mentioned, UC Health earlier, um, to build their provider master, there's a lot of different sources of, well, we've got name and address information over here, we got certified inf uh um, we, we got doctor and nurse certification information over here. We've got a different place that has the list of all the, the various certifications that someone should have. We got a list of uh, all the locations that they work at and how we schedule them. And all of this information needs to be pulled together if you want to have a proper information about your healthcare provider so that you can you know, use that information. So many of these independent siloed sources give you the data that you need, but in little fragments, and you need to assemble the puzzle picture so that you can uh, use it properly. And that's what MDM would do in that particular case. So the, the kinds of use cases, as I've kind of been saying, um, that they would be, uh, why they would need this high quality trusted data is for compliance. We just talked about provider master and some of the uh, CMS compliance requirements around that. Operational efficiency, um, I'm gonna, well, I'll talk about some examples of that in just a second. Um, BI analytics, meaning insights around how the day, the company, the organization, I should say, is performing, whether that's simple um, utilization charts of, of healthcare providers or whether it's uh, um, uh, population health, be a much more uh, grand or a much more complex uh, thing to model. But if you have this right foundational information, these are tractable problems. And all of these are under the heading of some form of digital transformation. So. Let me dive into a, a couple of uh, the more detailed examples that I already talked about, but at a, at a greater level. So MD Anderson Cancer Center, as I said, the largest cancer research center in North America. Um, over time, they have built out or are in the process of building out uh, these six, six broad domains, and I'll, I'll talk through uh, each one of them. Um, they started with us, as I said, four or five years ago, with, with prophecy, that is. Um, and uh, they started off with facility or location because they thought that would be one of the simpler things to, to manage. But, uh, you know, your, your, your locations, meaning your, your um, you know, care delivery uh, locations may not be well constructed, may not be, you know, uh, properly um, uh, specified. So when they were doing simple things, and this speaks to operational efficiency, uh, for fire monitoring, they wanted to be able to communicate with the local fire marshals because, you know, they're a big facility and, and uh, <laughs> bad things could happen if, if a gas tank explodes or whatever. Um, but they didn't even have standardized information, standardized address or location information that they could use to communicate with their local fire marshals. Now, that's, you know, you, you could argue that's a relatively niche kind of um uh, use case, but it's the kind of thing that people have to deal with all the time. And should they deal with it from having a standard list of facilities and locations and addresses and geocodes, or should they make it up every time by themselves? That There's just a lot of redundancy there and potential for error and miscommunication. If you get your facility and location list as simple and prosaic as that may seem, if you get that right first, everything else is going to be easier. Um, they could do event management for, for booking of facilities. They can do call management for uh, we need to you know, communicate with everyone in this building. And, and so now we know how to do that. Uh, uh, 
all of that kind of thing. Simple stuff, but big operational efficiencies. And it's for them, it was their on-ramp to doing things that were more complex, uh, like employees. So employees, which includes their uh, you know, providers, uh, doctors and nurses and whatever, but also includes janitorial and administrative staff and all that kind of stuff. So they, they built out this employee master. Again, there was bits of information in lots of different places. None of them were necessarily reliable source of truth. And, you know, you're paying all these people. So you have an HR system. So, you know, you've got a good list, but that doesn't, uh, it doesn't allow them to tax management, um, you know, uh, card scans and, and, and badges, uh, a proper employee directory, emergency notification information, all of that kind of stuff. So um, building out beyond the HR and enriching all of that, and again, getting into provider master and certifications and all of that kind of thing. Uh, patients, important for them to manage because of study inclusion. Uh, or because they are a research uh, organization, they want to know who has been included in various different studies that they've done over time. Uh, things like address verification for notifications and stuff like that. Contact only flags, again, a place where you can go, where you can rely on the data, you can rely on it being the most uh, relevant and up-to-date and complete record that is managed and therefore used with for all, all these operational and research uh, things. So you can, you know, when we say study inclusion, you know, who was over 65 and had this is issue and that outcome, and now we're going to zero in on that as a subgroup so that we can, uh, you know, think about them from a, a research analytic perspective. Donors. Um, as I mentioned before, I mean, this is a little orthogonal to, to, to the business of healthcare, but um, MD Anderson is, is um, a uh, nonprofit and they do have a charity donor list, but they, they need to manage that well. They had previously had multiple different versions of the list, uh, some for high profile donors and some for lower dollar donors. And uh, some of that was duplicated and all that kind of thing. Um, and some of them over time say, you know, don't contact me anymore. So legally you have to um, you know, suppress the list and so managing that in an efficient way again a little off topic but um, but it's something that they ended up using the software for I, I, in a different presentation I talk about Domino's uh, pizza uh, and they, they use us to manage uh, when someone is entering a uh, an order on their phone or their browser or whatsoever uh, they're, they're, they bought us in order to um, optimize that process and look at someone's past uh, uh, purchasing history for pizzas and, you know, offer them real-time upgrades and things like that. But over time, they started using it for IT asset management, like the security tag on your laptop, and that, that kind of thing. Very different, but again, it's all about data and it's all about getting value and usefulness out of your data. Um, uh, MD Anderson, uh, last time I spoke to them, was building out supplies, meaning MRO procurement for uh, supplier reconciliation, price benchmarking across multiple different suppliers, and they needed to... Uh, uh, they thought there was going to be a big ROI in, in standardizing all of that. And then reference data management <clears throat> was the thing that they really accelerated here um, around uh, standard code definitions, medical vocabularies, crosswalking and mappings. Uh, I mentioned when COVID started, they wanted to be able to share information with other organizations. So uh, really locking down all of their, their definitions, glossaries and things so that they could, uh, it was standard enough that they could share that information from a research perspective was very important. So um, a, a broad sweep of uh, multiple things that they built out over time that are helping them with all of the, uh, you know, being able to use the data efficiently and not have it hold them back. Um, Vituity, I'll talk a little bit about uh, Vituity for a minute. Um, they are a uh, contract outsourcing uh, healthcare provider. Uh, they provide you know, like a full staff to manage your, um, emergency room or to manage your you know, various types of surgery and things like that. Um, so they are a healthcare provider, but they're also uh, external contract managers. So being very efficient is very, very important to them because they're, literally their profitability depends on it. So over time, they have built out uh, provider uh, information. So, you know, again, all the things we talked about, compliance, uh, consolidating information for credentialing and billing and legal and all of that kind of stuff eliminating errors and inconsistencies, avoiding redundant maintenance effort because they had different people uh, in the organization who are all kind of managing different parts of it, uh, but it got redundant and confusing. And it becomes a solid reporting for um, 
solid foundation for reporting, for compliance and all of that stuff. Facilities and locations, all the things I talked about <clears throat> earlier, uh, but for them, uh, they, they needed the facilities and locations to be very consistently uh, um, entered because, well, one, people look those up in, the, in order to find uh, the, the providers that work at the different locations, eliminating redundant effort there, but also en enabling accurate reporting um, across uh, for, for billing and, and that kind of thing. And if they were find it, if they, they had submitted a bill with their version of the uh, facility name on it, but the um, the healthcare provider they were contracted with didn't recognize it, it just caused all kinds of efficiency issues. Patients, um, enabling patient tracking through better care experience to deliver better care, better tracking metrics. So uh, as you would hope when someone uh, goes and registers with, uh, you know, goes into the, the emergency room or whatsoever, uh, they check in once and then everybody else already has that information that, um, all the way down the, the, the chain. So they're not having to re-enter and restate all that information. Again, avoiding redundant data entry and providing better care and a better experience. Um, pair contracts, if the information in their, their contractual information is not properly standardized, it causes all kinds of uh, billing inconsistencies and mismatches. Uh, but also having roll-up hierarchies around the contracts allows them to do management reporting and uh, get better insights and reference data management. Again, a little bit like uh, MD Anderson, uh, CPT, ICD-9 and 10, CCS, they had all of the standards already, of course, but they found when they looked at multiple of their different systems, there were different versions, you know, different versions, uh, released versions of ICD-9 and 10. And so the data was being standardized, standardized but not to the same standards. So um, starting to, to um, build out reference data management so that all of that stuff uh, is is properly standardized. And uh, we did a webcast with them. Jenny Hewn of uh, Vituity was their project lead. And one of the things she said as, as a quote in the uh, presentation was her her advice to anyone implementing is start with one domain for simplicity. And they started with provider. Um, but there is no chance that there's a business out there that only has one domain to be mastered. So again, word to the wise, think about it this way. If you're going to embark on a journey like this, if particularly if you're an Azure customer and you're thinking about your data in, in big, broad terms, you do not want to uh, select an MDM vendor that specializes in only one domain or is going to require you to come back and uh, uh, buy access to other domains, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that, that's uh, healthcare. I'll, I'll do a little bit briefer uh, um, spin through of manufacturing. So again, we have lots of manufacturing customers and you'll see names here like uh, you know, Pella, Windows and Doors, TTX manages uh, railroad rolling stock and is using us to kind of standardize them for scheduling and uh, leasing of rolling stock. TKE is uh, uh, TK Elevators, and so they're using us for um, helping to coordinate um, condition monitoring of uh, and uh, repair of elevators installed in various businesses and uh, malls and whatsoever uh, around the world. But also there's uh, Osser and some of these other ones that we just uh, mentioned here. So a very broad selection uh, of, of organizations, manufacturing organizations. What we have found is the, uh, the common threads around them. And this I think is also true of all of the, the subset that are in device manufacturing is there's probably a lot of ERP sprawl. No single source of truth. There's many overlapping ERP systems from previous acquisitions, independent regional operations, et cetera. Particularly in manufacturing, you know, it's very common to, you know, well, M&A is very uh, common in this space. So there are lots of roll-ups and things like that. But also if you're actually a physically manufacturing, you spend a lot of time in that manufacturing facility just managing the inputs and outputs of the, of the production. And so you're not really thinking about the standards of the management and business related data that might need to be consolidated at, at a higher level. So, um, but these days there's a lot of pressure on manufacturers, a lot of pressure on every organization, but manufacturers in particular to, to uh, be a bit more efficient about all of that kind of thing and uh, uh, provide visibility at the higher level. So um, there's a need for high quality trusted data for uh, all of the things we talked about, digital transformation, analytics, efficiency, compliance, et cetera. Um, I think the thing that is most common around the device manufacturers, and this, this may not be 100% generalizable, but the, the ones that we have engaged with, uh, there's a lot of, they're trying to engage their customers in new ways. So when we've worked with them, you, you saw the examples I gave earlier, uh, they're mostly mastering customer and product because they're trying to engage with their customers in new ways. They are 
ultimately a distributor. They're distributing to the healthcare providers who are then um, distributing to, uh, in some cases, to uh, end users, consumers of that stuff. Sometimes they want to develop a, a, a direct relationship with the end consumer. Sometimes they want to just be more efficient in understanding who's consuming what where. Uh, but it's, it's from my experience, um, it's been less around the internal operations, more around the downstream. How do we sell and how do we engage with our customers? Uh, there is also an element of more resilient supply chains, although I've seen less of it in medical device manufacturers, but in some of these other manufacturers, there's a lot of upstream. Uh, how do I make sure I have a, um, a resilient supply chain? You know, if COVID happens and you know, all of a sudden this manufacturer goes offline and doesn't deliver to us or uh, a container ship gets uh, stuck in the Suez Canal and it causes all these ripple effects. I need to make sure I have a resilient supply chain. So that's more on the uh, procurement side. So these are the kind of things that we see um, really all over the place. Um, so hopefully, again, this gives you some insight into um, practical applications of this whole topic of, of consolidating data, certifying it and using it as a foundation because all businesses do it at some level for, for whatever their particular reason is. And in manufacturing, a summary of some of this stuff, um, you know, the high level executives looking for uh, um, a, a consolidated trust view of enterprise wide metrics that goes across multiple plants, multiple distribution centers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can standardize the data from all those disparate ERP systems for enterprise reporting, sales and marketing. Uh, and this is the thing I was just spoke to. How can I identify customer behavior and create personalized marketing experiences? a custom uh, a program for uh, healthcare uh, consumers in a particular region or a particular specialty or whatsoever, uh, what, what might we want to give them special promotions for, et cetera. Sourcing and procurement is the upstream, you know, the resilient supply chain stuff, uh, strategic uh, negotiations, strategic procurement to consolidate your spend by product, vendor, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, supply chain manager, uh, similar kind of thing. How can I make sure that I have all of my MRO in, uh, uh, stuff, all my direct consumables, make sure all of that data is uh, properly organized and that you're uh, working efficiently with your upstream vendors. Uh, and then various forms of operations. Again, I think medical device manufacturers may be less uh, so, um, but if you're running a big complex manufacturing plant, you've probably got a lot of automation, you've got a lot of supply points, you've probably got IoT streaming data, and things like that. You might be trying to uh, um, standardize some of that information um, uh, as well. So a broad set of use cases across manufacturing. So uh, I'm gonna start summarizing here. If there's been any uh, um, questions, I haven't been able to monitor the chat as we've been going through. Hopefully there, some people have uh, dropped some questions in the, in the chat, either in LinkedIn or in, uh, um, uh, Goldcast. Um, and we'll get to those in just a sec. So, but um, uh, just uh, uh, to summarize uh, the, the whole Better Together idea, again, Microsoft-centric uh, conversation here, but uh, if you accept the idea that master data management is an important technology to have because you need to have a trusted set of data to drive all those things, then why choose Prophecy? Um, in particular, Prophecy is pre-integrated with Azure. Um, we uh, were pre-integrated with Purview, as I talked about, so to enforce the governance rules that it may specify. Pre-integrated with ADF to leverage those pre-built connectors. Power BI, again, to leverage pre-built connectors. All of these things are being shipped with the, these respective products and Synapse to power, uh, publish uh, data into uh, analytics, et cetera. We're easy to buy and deploy. Um, we target a 90-day implementation, a relatively fast turnaround. Some other vendors in this space do not have anywhere close to that level. Um, and uh, we can talk about that offline if anyone's interested. Uh, we can deliver cloud native platform as a service or software as a service, your choice. It's the same software. Uh, we can manage it for you in an Azure tenant, or we can um, uh, you, you can buy it and deploy it on any platform as a service uh, tenant that you would want, either an Azure or uh, um, uh, Google Cloud or, or AWS or where or on-prem or wherever you'd want it. We're available in Azure Marketplace. And I spent time there talking about we're inherently multi-domain. We have no technical or pricing limitations for all the different domains that you might want to, uh, uh, to deploy, uh, which is very important for all the reasons that I, I, I talked about earlier. And we're a mature, well-known, trusted solution in the MDM space. We're in the Gartner Magic Quadrant. We have the highest 
uh, recommendations on Gartner Peer Insights, and we have references and use cases across all the verticals. And I give you a little bit of a flavor of that as we went through here. And uh, even, uh, um, I say even, particularly people high up in, uh, in Microsoft recognize the value of this. Master data management is an important aspect of a unified approach to data governance, the combination of Azure Purview and uh, no, Microsoft Purview, uh, um, and a deeply integrated MDM solution such as Proxy is a tremendous benefit to Azure customers. Uh, Mike Flasco owns the Purview product and uh, knows whereof he speaks. So um, this is uh, an important topic and we believe all the investment we've put in to making it work seamlessly and easily in a Microsoft environment makes it kind of a no brainer solution for anyone on Microsoft. A couple of other things I'll, I'll talk about just as we wrap up here. Um, Prophecy is a fast, affordable, a scalable solution. Some other vendors in the space might be able to claim a couple of those things, but not really all three. Uh, fast time to value, Gartner and their, one of their MQs talks about Prophecy is more implementations taking under three months than any other vendor. We find that that's you know, pretty, typically a fairly uh, a realistic implementation timeframe. The software itself you'll have up and running in a few minutes. Uh, it's the decisions you need to make about how you're going to govern your data uh, that, that take a little bit longer, but nevertheless, we're uh, fairly easy to use and you can get going pretty fast. We're affordable. We start uh, at a relatively small price, low, low price point, just like uh, a lot of the things you buy from Microsoft and it work in Azure. Um, you can start small and then grow according to your usage, which is typically uh, through your, your data volume and uh, that kind of thing. And we're very scalable, scalable in multiple different ways. We can scale to very large data volumes. Um, I mentioned, uh, um, uh, Domino's just a few minutes ago, and they're matching millions of tens of millions of records against tens of millions of records for their for that. So we're, we're not afraid of large volumes. We're also very flexible in our implementation and all of the domains that we can handle. So um, we have a set of uh, um, deployment models and uh, all of the stuff around multiple domains. I'll, I'll just say again, we're inherently multi-domain. That allows you to maximize your coverage and ROI with no technical or pricing limitations. And again, Gartner validates this. Prophecy is one of the highest numbers of customers running multiple domains. And we're generally speaking, pretty easy to implement. We put a lot of investment into um, various things to make it easy. If you're a Microsoft uh, um, organization, we're pre-integrated as, as I've been talking about. You can deploy PaaS or SaaS, as I mentioned a moment ago, and we're fairly easy to learn, uh, self-paced training uh, and all of that kind of stuff, and a fairly intuitive UI. And if you join one of our um, regular weekly webcasts, you'll see some of the, um, you'll see the software live and you'll see how easy that is in fact to use. So uh, I'm gonna wrap up here. If there's any, uh, if you'd like to hear more, uh, like to speak to us farther, um, you can contact us direct on our website, prophecy.com. Uh, you can go to contact and uh, either in engage with someone there, or if you want to sign up for one of those regular weekly demos that I talked about, you can do that also. So hopefully this has been valuable to uh, all of the different audiences that we had here, we have about um, uh, eight or 10 minutes left. So if there's any questions, please feel free. I'll leave this slide up here for a little bit. If you want to find more, uh, if you're particularly Microsoft centric and want to find more, you can go to prophecy.com slash Microsoft um, or prophecy.com slash MIDP. Uh, and MIDP is the Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform. We just uh, were included in a Microsoft uh, um, release here. Uh, an announcement of being part of the first wave of uh, partners involved in this uh, ecosystem. So there's more information about that there and there's some published reference architectures if you're interested. So let me now try and catch up and see what we have in terms of questions. Thanks, Martin. I do have a question for you. You brought up a couple of times, Please. but it, it was really interesting to hear that not everybody has their data on a Microsoft platform. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, you know, and we see this with Purview mm -hmm. as well as it's a great solution. Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's, I, I, I didn't know that existed, but uh, good, good to be exposed to that. Um, no, in, in all honesty, you know, I, we, I deal with multi-cloud customers, uh, customers and maybe even primarily on, uh, you know, maybe AWS, for example. Um, you know, and we're having lots of conversations about using Purview um, as as their MDM solution, because it's it's an open um, source, um, or I'm sorry, purview and, and prophecy as a combination, um, because you know it is an open system. Um, purview, for example, is built on Apache Atlas, and 
Um, there's lots of plugins and we, we plan to be very open to, you know, obviously we're going to do a good job with the Microsoft products, but maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Like, you know, even though you might have all your data center might be Snowflake or AWS, how, how does this, uh, how does this work or, or what is the value prop there? So the value prop is really the same irrespective of, of your technical infrastructure, whether your data is in Snowflake or Synapse or whether, you know, whether you're, you're pulling data from Microsoft Dynamics or SAP or um, uh, Salesforce.com or anything like that. Um, the, the, the value prop is the data, whoever you are um, and however you're built, uh, your data will be coming from multiple sources and inevitably um, those multiple sources will not have been um, managed, governed uh, in the same way, if they were governed at all, frankly. But if they were governed, uh, you know, your Salesforce system has got different rules for how it validates and manages things than your uh, Microsoft Dynamics, than SAP. Um, even all in the same organization, it's technically difficult to have very consistent governance there. But as a practical matter, most of that information was created by different parts of the organization for different reasons. Um, and, you know, they need it to, to conform to the standards they need. But if I'm trying to pull it all together and leverage it, I now need to do a better job of universal governance and universal standardization. And that's what we're here for, working in tandem with, with Purview. So um, I, I, I try not to get um, too specific about, is it Snowflake, is it Databricks, is it Synapse? You know, the, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's important that the data has been mastered. And when we publish it into the uh, uh, analytic database, whichever one you happen to be using, the data is already trustworthy. So now whatever your specialty is, I mean, the specialty provided by Synapse versus Databricks versus whatever, or the specialties of, uh, you know, Power BI versus Click versus Tableau versus whatever, um, if you're pulling from trusted data, those systems will be able to um, express, uh, uh, to, to deliver on those benefits. But it's everything in IT, for, since the very beginning of IT, is a garbage in, garbage out proposition. You put faulty uh, information in on the front end, and none of those systems will be able to deliver a, a very good result, no matter how clever and smart and efficient they are, no matter which vendors uh, you bought them from. However, if you put high quality raw material in, um, meaning the data, uh, then you can produce really insightful, interesting results. And that's where we, you know, if you don't have MDM or, or whatever equivalent thing you might think of, um, you've got, a, you've got a, a, a break in the chain, you know, a, a link in the supply to the data supply chain. So uh, you need to fill that in if you want to work efficiently at all. Did that answer the question, Mike? Is that kind of what yeah, you Yeah, I think so. I, you know, really what I, when I look at the combination of these two products, it's really, regardless of where your data sits, this is a very easy, relatively affordable thing to get going on. If you don't get this going first and you're bringing it in later, it's really hard. And, you know, master data management has been around for a while, but for some reason, new products, new innovations in the space, like purview prophecy integration with it, um, keep coming up. So I, I think it's a really important topic and um, it's not too late to get going with, uh, data cataloging, data governance, but, um, you know, finding that, um, you know, it's more important than ever um, as people. Yeah. Are and I think the more. reason that, that there's a recognition that it's more important than ever because of the pressures that all organizations and businesses are, are under. Um, and and there, I think everybody obviously recognizes that data should be managed as an asset of the business because it's part of how you can run your business well and efficiently with good insight. Um, if you don't, take advantage of those assets you're you're just you're missing the missing the point of of the modern world um and the but the more information you want to leverage from the more different sources across the more domains uh the more you start to realize that you need to govern the data well and part of it governing the data well is enforcing your consistent rules across data forever rights and however it's going to be consumed and that's that's kind of the point of everything we talked about here yeah i think data mesh data lakes, all the data fabric, all these different concepts. The data is getting more spread out in certain ways from a domain perspective. We're not taking all the time to curate it and do this really monolithic project to building the data warehouse. So I think that's where we're really seeing demand for things like purview prophecy. But um, 
Thanks. This has been great. Um, I'll let you wrap up. All right. Up. So we're, we're at the top of the earth. Thank you both. Uh, thanks, uh, Mike and, and Carson, for uh, uh, helping host this and, and uh, um, you know, make it available to all your, your different audiences. I hope that everybody who's been listening here has got something out of it, whether you're a Microsoft employee or whichever uh, part of the healthcare ecosystem you're from. Hopefully this is valuable. And uh, if you'd like to follow up, please just go to our website, uh, click the contact button, and uh, we'll be happy to chat with you. Yeah, or feel free to reach out to uh, your account teams. Happy to uh, find some ways to continue the dialogue as well. I saw the chat was really active on LinkedIn. Uh, Malcolm did a phenomenal job of uh, responding and following up to each. So if you have any subsequent questions, feel free to reach out to any of us, and uh, we'll be happy to continue the dialogue. Thanks for being on today. All right. Thanks, everyone, for your time. Look forward to speaking to you all in the future. Bye.